Welcome back to Stasis, everybody. We're now in the same wing of the ship as John's daughter, so in theory we're getting closer to her, but things can never be that simple. This is strange. I'm not reading any PDTs in your area. They should remain active. Even on the de- Tell me, John. Why are you working? With this jackal. Dr. Milan. Ah. <laughs> She's been talking about me. Look, I'm nobody. I just want to find my family. Without a family, man alone in the world. The impulse with the cold. Now you can make John. Make us make no mistake. You are alone. Hello? Jim, are you there? I dealt with the comm system. What did he say? He knew me. He knew my name. Could he help us? John, this is happening because of him. He did all of this. This is all too much for me, too. I'm just a school teacher. I can promise you that I want to find your family as much as you do. We're in this together. Now, if you look around this room in particular, you'll see a bunch of bloodstains, and they'll constantly tell you there's bloodstains but no bodies. That becomes... You know what? Just, just remember that. Just remember that for later. Anyway, since we saw those two gun turrets spring out of these metal plates in the floor, I think I'm going to go ahead and make a safety save, because it's time to go achievement hunting. So let's do the smart thing and just walk right into the path of where those guns were pointing. And that is how you get the Crossfire achievement. Now back to what we're supposed to do. Obviously, we're going to avoid stepping in front of those gun turrets, which basically means we just get to interact with this vending machine. Even though we do get a can of soda out of this, you're going to hate this vending machine very quickly. <laughs> It's not even catchy annoying, it's just annoying. Well, the good news is, John doesn't like this vending machine either. Never like Coca Cola. <laughs> if you were paying attention when we got the crossfire achievement, one of the gun turrets broke off of its hinge and stopped firing in the middle of that. So if we can get it to fire at something else... Now that gun turret's down, and we can go into the hole that it came out of and access the ductwork underneath this room. But first, there's this dangling wire which was behind the vending machine. And even though it's sparking, we're just going to reach up and grab it and put it in our inventory. Which, by the way, for those of you who are paying attention, our inventory got wiped when we made the transition to the medical bay. Now, just because that one gun turret's down, that doesn't mean that the other one is suddenly going to stop working. So if you get any wise ideas about going to this glass door, eh, yeah, it doesn't end well. It is another opportunity to get the crossfire achievement, though, just in case you didn't get it on the first go-around. Now we're going to jump down into the ducts, and they're very narrow, so John has to crawl through all of them. And I'm going to warn you, I'm only going to show you the crawling animation going up to this dead body to access its PDA. Because holy shit, this is slow. Even though we don't have a lot of ground to cover, I'm still going to speed it up for convenience sake. Found the body too. He's pretty bloodied up. Say hello to the chief system engineer, who mentions that around the time of the power outages, 
one person he was working with broke down like he was going through withdrawal from some sort of drug, but he didn't have anything in his system. And this had been happening to some other people on the ship as well. Meanwhile, that fungus or growth or whatever is growing all over the ship now, and he's thinking of torching it, but he's worried that it might be too late for that now. And anytime he messages Dr. Milan about this, all that happens is a couple of his quote-unquote stooges go to collect samples and then go away. They don't actually do anything. And when he asks one of Milan's assistants when are they going to get food rations, all she says is, soon. Jump ahead to December, all hell's broken loose, this guy's hiding under the uh, security terminals, and other people are holed up in the bulkheads. They sent him to get help because he said, well, we're just going to starve or die anyway. And this is where he ended up. He says that the creatures on the ship use the people's PDTs in order to get past security checkpoints, so he wired the guns to shoot at anything that still has a personal data tag. And as he's hiding from these things, which he mentions are peeling up the floors and the walls, that he has a gun with one bullet left, and, well, you can probably guess where that went. In addition to those entries, there is this notice from a doctor saying that because those things are using PDTs to get past security checkpoints, it's been mandated that everybody has their personal data tag surgically removed. Remember how he suddenly couldn't get the signal for John's daughter? I mean, I'm just spitballing, but you know. It also makes mention of a password to the crew quarters, Aegis. And finally, there's an email from Mr. Dryson here saying that whatever this growth is, it's spreading all over the ship, it's covered some of the engines, and it's causing the ship to slow down almost to a stop and that everybody should get whatever they can to uh, get this stuff off without damaging the protective casings for anything. Now then, it's time to speed crawl over to the pistol and pick it up. Doesn't have any bullets in it, but that doesn't mean we can't use it. And then we're going to go over to that computer that's set up over here with uh, the gun just beyond it. This controls the uh, sentry guns. And once we check it out, we're going to see that, uh, well, one of them, the connection's been severed because that gun broke. And this other one is still fully operational. Now what we have to do is figure out a way to disable that gun. And there's a clue uh, if you look at the computer because it says there's a bunch of soda cans underneath it. So we're just going to pour soda all over the computer and that'll cause the gun to short out. The only thing that might trip you up about this is you think, oh, it says uh, replace the cable, so maybe I gotta use my cable. No, you don't. So now the gun is out of commission, and we can go back up through the duct, which means no more speed crawling, and we can walk over to the door without consequence. However, there's going to be one last puzzle we have to do before we can advance into the medical bay proper instead of this staging area. I hate doors. One override. Coming up. Shit, John! The security systems in medical are inaccessible. It's like they've been locally reset. I can't access anything. I'll think of something. Locally reset? How could that be? Well, we gotta take matters into our own hands. And by matters into our own hands, I mean we gotta pick up this gun on the floor with our own hands and then shoot open the glass. Good thing that this sentry gun apparently has a trigger on it or some sort of firing mechanism, otherwise this wouldn't work. Anyway, moving on. Now we get into another room where there's a ton of blood, but no bodies. Could this possibly be related to the whole personal data tag thing from earlier? Warning. This area is off limits to all active PDT users. Please see your supervisor for further instructions. That makes no sense. All PDTs. 
Not everyone. They must have changed security settings. Stop anyone from heading down below. Or coming up. Hmm. Well then, the question remains. What are we going to do about John's personal data tag? Are we going to leave it in and try to dance around all these security measures? Or are we going to find a way to remove it? By the way, pay attention to right of center of the screen. Next time on Stasis, what the hell was that? <laughs>